Hey again, everybody. I'm going to do a little bit of a real brief introduction to Max for Live, starting really basic. Uh, while I'm having some coffee here, we're going to go through a little object I created called Transpose. This is real beginner, you know, take it slow kind of stuff. So hopefully, uh, you know, if you're bored, tune out. You know, you want to check a more advanced video out. Look at you know buffer shuffler, all that kind of great stuff. You know, this isn't for you. This this is for the basics. So anyway. Uh, on channel, on my, excuse me, track one here, I have uh, three devices already kind of placed here. I have a max MIDI effect, I have a max instrument, and a max audio effect. So the MIDI device, MIDI effect, is kind of the simplest piece of it. We just deal with uh, MIDI information on it. The instrument, probably the most complicated one, in that you have MIDI coming in and you have audio, you basically have to create audio uh, from scratch inside there. And the audio effect uh, is not as complicated as the instrument because you only deal with audio and maybe you're just processing stuff as opposed to creating stuff from scratch. So you have those three types of things. They show up in instruments. You'll see max instrument, MIDI effects. You'll see max MIDI effect. And audio effects, you'll see max audio effect. Close that down. If you open up any of these, if I just grab a max MIDI effect, You'll see MIDI in to MIDI out. Uh, Max creates these little objects uh, and you wire them together. So little uh, kind of patch cords. And if I wanted an audio effect, Max audio effect, I'll drag it into that track. And you'll see I have a Max audio effect. Plug in to plug out. Real simple. Now, let's say I wanted to drag a Max instrument in there. I'll grab bass line. And. All goes well. I have a little synthesizer kind of thing. Whoops, wrong track. I will that one. The whole Max for Live chain going on there. So MIDI goes in, goes into the instrument, and comes out again. Passes through if I disable any of these things. Just like other devices. Uh, other effects. If I disable it, the MIDI is going to go through unaffected and the audio is going to go through unaffected. If I turn the instrument off, I might not get anything on the track, you know, because that's obvious, right? Okay. Real simple. So my control, MIDI is always control information. That goes straight through in this guy, and audio goes straight through. You notice the differences? MIDI in, no tilde at the end, and it's a little simple black uh, patch cord, that means MIDI information. That's kind of slower, not sample rate uh, information, just uh, straight note on, note off, you know, byte commands, things like that. In the audio one, you'll see it's plug-in tilde. That's called the tilde there, the little squiggly line. Uh, that means it's an audio processing or an MSP object. Um, and it also, you'll see it has these wonderful little uh, bumblebee kind of uh, looking patch cords, which means their audio rate and there's audio going back and forth. So plug in tilde means the incoming audio, plug out tilde, the, the outgoing stuff. And you can click on them and you get something there. And we'll. Uh, I never, why isn't it center? I don't know, maybe I need to have my mouse in a certain spot. Maybe my mouse is over there. It's, I don't know, crazy. So we'll scroll up and down. And everything is clickable and stretchable, and you just go ahead. You know, here's a real simple example. See, I disconnect that side. I'm only getting one channel now. And see, I disconnect that. I don't get anything. I can. My simplest effect here I might want to do is okay. Swap left and right channels. It's hard to kind of tell on that one, but that's what's going on in there. Real simple. Close that, say, oh, don't save. So put there as a normal again. And MIDI in. To show an example, that's going to be a little bit tricky. So I'm going to hop over to here, something I've already done. And open that guy up. And once again, we're going to zoom in. This is good to like, memorize our keyboard commands. OK. So here I have a MIDI in, which gives all the MIDI information. Comes in as raw data. Normally, it's connected right to the MIDI out. Uh, in this case, it's not. It's going through this MIDI select. MIDI select is a real handy little uh, object in that I send raw MIDI data to it, and it divides it up into real MIDI messages, notes, uh, poly key pressure, which unfortunately live doesn't really work with, uh, control change, 
uh, what do we program change, uh, channel aftertouch, which does uh, support uh, pitch bend, and we have the MIDI channel, which we use to kind of make sure the channel information all comes through, and then pass through any unselected stuff. So anything I don't send somewhere else winds up on this other spigot, this little outlet. Um, so I send that back out MIDI out, so only the things that I wind up touching are getting affected. And in this case, I have it set at note, meaning I'm interested in the note information, all. So send that all notes, uh, all channels. That comes out, and you'll see I get a list out. Uh, you see the pitch and velocity. Uh, that comes out as a list, and then I have to slice up that list using the list processor, the ZL. I heard that's the name for like David uh, Ziccarelli. David's the uh, head of uh, Cycling 74. Um, and so I guess he can name an object after himself. Anybody can. You can create your own externals, do all kinds of stuff in Max. But the ZL gets used a lot. So that slices things up. This is a real basic use of the list. Uh, slice one, which basically means divide you know, one value on one, one value on the other, real simple. Um, so out this side is going to come the, the second or the right side of the list, which is because I, I know how you know MIDI stuff is you know here we said okay pitch velocity so velocity is going to come out of there and be sent to my note out velocity and my MIDI channel is coming from my MIDI select that's passing that through it has this really great hover over help right make it real obvious what's going on so the real processing part of it is what's going on over here though the uh, this side is sending out the note uh, the pitch so I'm passing the pitch through. Uh, just straight through, so you get the original note, but I also pass it through these two operators. Uh, one adds seven semitones and then passes it through, and the other one adds five semitones. Now, because it's on this uh, this side of things, I'm, what's going to happen is this is going to be processed, and they process from right to left. So this is going to happen, then this is going to happen, then this is going to happen, but it's all going to happen literally in the blink of an eye. Um, this value is just going to get used over and over again. This value is going to get used over and over again. It's always like the the leftmost um, the leftmost inlet on things normally is the one that you know has a they call it a bang. Uh, this means you know do it, do whatever is supposed to be in there. So in this case, uh, it's going to get banged <laughs> three times, uh, and it's going to have a, the regular normal note, and then uh, seven semitones up and five semitones up. So you'll hear, whoops, uh, I have to move over to that track. I'll come back to that one. Oh, cancel. So I'm getting these, uh, let me turn the level down a little bit. These chords, if I remove those patch chords there, Should have just the original. All right, there's one more. So there it is. Real simple device. Um, close it, save it. If I wanted to, save it. And it winds up in there. Done. Real simple max MIDI effect.